It is my great honor to introduce Mr. Darcy Martin. He's an adult educator, activist. Um, he is joining us from Seattle today, so it's very early in the morning for him. Um, he has designed a condensed version, but a, an amazing version of Union Judo, which I gave everyone the documentation this morning, so you have that in your kits. Um, take it away, Darcy. Hello, good morning, everyone. So thank you for uh, bringing me into your conversations. I know that you've got lots of business to take care of today. I'll try not to waste your time. And uh, I'm getting a little old now to waste my time. So I'm going to try and use uh, my part of the time as well as I can. Uh, and to start off, I think that we need a little demonstration of what we're talking about, which is Union Judo. So I wonder if I could get uh, volunteers, uh, a, a mix of uh, uh, male and female and uh, uh, non-binary, however you want to do it. Uh, what I need is two people to demonstrate boxing and two people to demonstrate Judo. It'll be very simple. Nobody will touch the other. But uh, we will observe how the people move. So uh, before you're too settled in, can I ask everyone in the room to stand? Everybody in the room to stand, please. Yeah. And just wave your arms around. This is uh, called waking up. And... Uh, while you're standing, can some daring people, uh, two for uh, for boxing and two for um, uh, for judo, step out next to the flip chart? <laughs> Come on now. Good. There's one. Okay. Uh, thank you. I've got two. Uh, are you for, uh, for boxing or for judo? Either one. Okay, we'll start you off right away. And I ask the rest of you to observe these people still standing. We're just boxing. Only boxing. All right. So... Uh, just let's just see your moves, please, as you go towards each other and around each other. Uh, let's see how it is. Oh no, that that's not boxing. Uh, okay, boxing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, stop, stop. Uh, that was very skillful. Okay. Uh, what do people observe about the way that these two uh, very, very good volunteers, can we first applaud them for their great contribution to the meeting? And can I ask you to uh, say, what do you notice in the way they were doing judo? What did you notice about it that would be different if they were boxing? Uh, okay, let, let speak up. Let me hear you. Yeah, I have one for this side. Adrian has one for that side. Okay. You want to answer this one? Sure. Thank you. Okay. So how how did you feel in the judo as opposed to boxing? What do you notice is the difference? Judo's more close in, where boxing is kind of in and out. Right. For judo so, is more of a constant engagement. Right. So you so for judo, you have to be connected. Right? Yep. Uh, for, for boxing, you have to be backing away 
and protecting your space, right? Any other thoughts? <laughs> Judo is more fluid. Judo is more definitely more fluid, whereas uh, boxing can be a bit more aggressive and stabby. Yeah. <laughs> stabby. Yeah. Okay. Less, less grappling. Yes, yeah, less grappling. Less grappling. Yeah. And which do we do more of in uh, our relations with the employer? Boxing. Boxing, for sure. Uh, why is Boxing. that? Because everyone's a lot more guarded and defensive and like negotiation style. Yeah. A little bit less. Very antagonistic. That's right. Yeah. Separated. Very separated. You don't want to show your hand. You don't want to show them too much without them showing you something first. Right. You don't move in until you're going to kill them. Yep. Okay. So, so uh, boxing is uh, defined by uh, distance, by uh, uh, poking into the other's space uh, and so on. So please have a seat, everybody now. And let's talk about what this means. Uh, I want you to imagine that uh, the employer uh, comes up with uh, a, a new uh, performance evaluation plan for a group of your members, okay? What would the boxing response be to that? Anybody speak up? Abide what would a... Yeah? Th thanks so much for the help with microphones. Avoidance. Okay. Avoidance, okay, so encouraging people not to participate, yeah, what else? There would We're be boxing. a lot more, that, like there would be a heavy blows traded as opposed to something more soft, subtle, uh, fluid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Other any other thoughts? Uh, you might file a grievance. If you think it's a violation of the collective agreement, for sure, that's our that's our number one uh, tool, right? So we just reach for that and pull it out, and use it right away. Anything else? Is a grievance like a punch in that regard? Do you see where I'm going with that? You know, a, a grievance is not. Uh, uh, an engagement for a long period, it's a very direct, focused bang back and forth. So what would a judo response be to a new initiative for uh, uh, performance evaluation? What would a judo response look like? Come on now, help me out. Sweep the leg. <laughs> right? Take take it out from under. And how would you do that? This morning's going to be all about how. Our method, our technique. Redirect. Redirect the attack so it's not uh -huh. so aggressive. Deflate their argument. Or have a have a better rebuttal in place to de-escalate an aggressive movement, such as, sorry. Keep going, yeah. No, no, just using their energy against them, I guess you could say, in the so true definition we are. of judo. So that's the essence of judo, is using their energy against them. So uh, I think you have distributed to all of you a sheet here. It's called Management Evaluation Form. So 
Is that, can you find that? Okay, so this is an example of what a, a union did uh, in response to an initiative for performance evaluation. As you can see, what they said, it starts out with, the union is concerned about the public image of our operation. This was a group of municipal employees in the Western United States. And they, uh, they were trying to find a way of stopping a new performance evaluation uh, plan that management wanted to bring in. So what they did was instead of grieving it, they ran their own survey and their survey was on the performance of managers. Is it clear? They ran that together. Uh, they uh, collated the results and they published them in the local newspaper, saying that they had a concern as the union. This was not even in bargaining, but it was at a time when the uh, management had become more aggressive and they decided to stop it, not by uh, boxing with it, but by uh, using the momentum against them. Because after all, management had said that performance is important. If they were going to try performance evaluation, obviously it was important. So look at the kind of topics they came up with. Uh, knowledge, fairness, and communication, and then something about strengths and uh, what needs improvement in the management. So what they did was to take an initiative, just imagine that you're back in that demonstration we just did, that you're taking the momentum of the management and pulling it towards you instead of punching against it. Anybody got thoughts on that? Can you see that as being usable in uh, a situation of a new management initiative? Yes. Okay, so uh, can, can you spell out a little bit? what it would look like? Anybody help me out, help yourselves out. Yes. Sorry. Uh, so I can see a, a few things happening here. So on one hand, you're taking control of the narrative. So management's putting out a performance evaluation. They're saying, here's the narrative. It's that our employees are not performing. You're basically putting that onus back on them and saying, no, actually you as the management are potentially not performing. You're creating a metric of that to make it measurable that allows you to repeat that over time. So you can say in a year, this is where we've changed or not. And then I think the clever part is publishing that publicly uh, because that allows you to take control of a public narrative as well. So you're telling a story using this survey um, that allows you to kind of counteract a different story that's coming down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're taking control of the narrative, right? Uh, not just of uh, a, a particular incident or something like that. You're actually trying to shift the initiative so that uh, management is kind of put back uh, uh, on their heels. They're not in a position to be able to move forward they then have to respond in terms of, do they go ahead with their own attempts at performance evaluation? In which case they may wind up compa with comparison between their results and the union's results. And if that happens, who's gonna win? Is the union strong enough to actually get a high proportion of intelligent responses from the members? Are your connections strong enough? That that requires the union leadership to think about the, the 
level of engagement with the members. If you don't have that, you cannot engage in judo. You can grieve. You can box with just a couple of uh, people that are technically smart and know the collective bargaining language. But you cannot do judo without having knowledge of who's behind you and who isn't. Any other thoughts on what uh, a judo approach on performance evaluation might give you? Why is the uh, why is the public narrative important? Is it important in all of the kinds of workplaces that you represent, or just in some? Like in pulp and paper, how important is public opinion in the community for the strength of the union versus management? Oh, someone coming. Yeah. Uh, Greg Ball, Local 15, PPWC Local 15. Uh, that's very important because the first thing the company does is want to negotiate everything in the media by telling them that we're all money-grubbing persons, not the real facts. Right, right. So management tries to seize the initiative uh, to get there first, essentially. And by doing that, to then put the uh, union back on its heels so that it's responding, saying, no, no, our people are good. We're working hard. Uh, difficulties are in the technology or in the marketing or wherever it might be. Might be. But uh, no. So we are in the uh, position of denying and rejecting, which is the boxing stance. Anyone else got a thought about the difference here? between a judo approach and a uh, uh, a boxing approach. Yes? Well, with the judo approach with the optics when you're when you're talking about the the initial start, uh, it's definitely a softer approach and it, I think that's that's a viewed a lot better than coming out with more of a boxing approach, like you're saying. So when they come out in the media, they get ahead of it. And then you need standing here to say, yeah, no, we hear you, but we're just going to keep doing what we're doing because we, our history, you know, speaks for itself, right? We have a history of supporting our members, supporting the community and just kind of putting that softer foot forward. So we don't mm -hmm. need to be aggressive, right? Aggressive seems to be more of a short-term, short-term approach. To try and, like you say, put us back on our heels or put people back on their heels. Mm -hmm. But then when you take that energy and you spin it around and you just go with the consistency, you know, that we've shown in the past as being, you know, for the people, by the people, community, I think that goes a long way, especially the optics of it, especially the public seeing it, right? Uh, someone else had their hand. I'm just... Don't want to skip anyone. I'm, I was just going to say, I, I I like the idea that you're sort of using the the same tool that they're using, trying to use against your members against them, right? So you know they're saying we're going to evaluate you. So, oh, you know you could file a grievance, and and the grie grievance probably wouldn't succeed actually, if unless you have specific language that says they can't do performance evaluation. But instead, by saying okay, you're going to evaluate us, well, we're also going to evaluate you, right? <laughs> we're going to publish that. It it, it is. It is using that same kind of technique, just turning it against them. And they may say, you know what, actually, we we don't want this. We don't want this published. So maybe we should both just not do this in the future. Right. So uh, you need to think uh, clearly about what your objective is. Do you want to actually stop the performance evaluation? Or do you want to pursue um, an assessment of management? Because have you noticed that sometimes... Uh, senior management will uh, place a, an asshole in as a supervisor intentionally. And then uh, the union spends a lot of energy fighting this asshole, but uh, 
really it's a distraction from the main thing, which might be performance evaluation, might be wage rates, might be whatever, uh, pensions. They might be have their eye on something else. So it's possible that uh, you can use this as a way of clearing away distractions because distractions are brought in by management all the time. And uh, when that comes in in the form of an aggressive supervisor or manager, uh, people sometimes react uh, and expect the union to react. So is there any, uh, to stick just for the moment to this uh, idea of the management evaluation, uh, is there anybody uh, who sees a uh, part of the members that really what they would want is uh, a strong, uh, vocal uh, punch against this initiative. In other words, would rather stick with boxing. Is there a part of the membership who expect that of the union and would get nervous with a softer approach? Yes. Okay. So that crew, you have to think about how do you pitch this idea to those people? I've got the mic. So <laughs> I was more uh, interested in just making another observation from the last statement. Uh, just Go to ahead. I'll get here. But I was, I was going to mention that... Um, uh, it seems like the approach where was more balanced and proportional rather than an open, uh, overreaction or an underreaction to what was uh, what was presented. So in terms of an evaluation, um, it would be, I think, unreasonable to overstretch and threaten to strike or something like that over an evaluation process, whereas just dealing with it on its own, uh, basically on its own turf would be a more balanced and, and proportional way to to handle the issue. Right. And uh, it may be a way of clearing a, clearing to the side an issue that management wants you to deal with uh, in order to distract you from other things that they're pursuing. So uh, it is a way of clearing the decks. So uh, what I'm suggesting here is, and this is based on real work, right? These are this was a real initiative that was done, and we've done others of that sort over the years uh, to keep people from wasting limited energy because members have limited energy for the union. They don't want uh, to be constantly involved in fights with management. So uh, you have to be careful when you take one on. There'll be some people who will be happy. There's the union getting behind us. The union is taking a stand. This is good, blah, blah. But whether that can be sustained over a long period and whether uh, there's a big constituency uh, in your membership for a softer approach that is more strategic, that's, I think, a question. Have you seen any evidence that there is an interest in the membership, a, uh, a grouping within the membership who would prefer to have an approach that is more judo and less uh, directly confrontational. Has anybody seen that in their membership in the last while? And do you see that as progress or as a setback? I'll answer since nobody else is. <laughs> I would say yes. Uh, there's always an element of people on on, on both sides. Um, I, I wouldn't see either one as a setback. Probably there's there's probably a, a, a place for both approaches depending on the the circumstance. Uh, yeah, can you uh, go with both at the same time? Good question. What I'm, what I'm suggesting this morning is that that is possible. That it's possible to have more than one approach 
to management uh, that boxing is not the only option that we have. It's just the one that we're familiar with. And generally, the people who rise to the level that all of you as delegates to the CCU are at uh, would say, mm, yeah, but we're good at that. We're good at boxing. So we got to be cautious about this other stuff. And, of course, that would be uh, uh, desirable, that you're able to do both, but keeping them in balance. So to do that, we have to think of what is management likely to bring forward. And here, uh, Brianne, since you've uh, volunteered to scribe a bit, would you mind moving up to the flip chart and seeing what the people have to say. And what I'm asking for is, are we okay? Yeah. What I'm asking for is uh, words that, that uh, reflect a management tactic for uh, weakening the union. that starts with the letter D, like D like Darcy, yeah. D like David. The divide and conquer. Okay. You got that, Brianne? Next. Who are you thinking of dividing? The person who said that. Who does management try to divide that you've seen? That's great. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. You can see the paper, but not the writing. It's a lighting issue, I think. Okay. All right. So, so turn it sideways then, so that it's not blocking access to the people. Yeah. Thank there you. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Brianna. Okay, so awesome. ideas, so divide and conquer. Who are you thinking of as being a target for management in terms of dividing? Who do they want to divide? Who from whom? They want to divide the membership. Yeah. And what specific groups of members do they choose to do the division with? The executive over the uh, regular memberships. Good. Yeah, for sure. Other thoughts, other tech, other tactics that start with the letter D. Divide. What other things does management do in order to keep the union off balance? Got a delay there. Delay, for sure. Uh, does management think they can outlast us on some issues if they just keep punting it forward? Push it, push it down the field ahead. So delay others. Deflect. Deflect, right. So you raise a problem, for example, around performance evaluation uh, and uh, uh, management, instead of responding to it, starts talking about a different topic entirely. So deflect, for sure. Deceive? Deceive, yes. So... Right, we have, uh... yeah, any more? We, we, we've got one vote for discredit. Discredit. And that would be especially aimed at union reps, right? 
so deceive. Uh, okay, let's just hold with that for a moment and think. Now, this is uh, a, a technique we use uh, for uh, creative strategy, which is to just generate possibilities and then see what we can do with them rather than critiquing them as they come forward. So let's take the, the, the one about uh, deflect. Management tries to deflect our interest. Let's say that we're pushing on the issue of pensions uh, and uh, certainly with inflation and all of that, uh, COLA, the importance of inflations uh, of inflation is uh, uh, coming home to a lot of members. So people are thinking about, about that. What might management throw in in order to uh, deflect interest in pension and COLA? They might throw out alternatives to pensions, maybe in a, well, you're American. I don't know if you're familiar with RRSPs or GICs or something like that. It's kind right. of a watered down version of a pension. Yes, exactly. Uh, by the way, I am uh, I just happened to be here uh, uh, <laughs> with my grandchildren uh, because I've, I've heard this rumor that uh, Taylor Swift is actually uh, taking over the United States. <laughs> and I thought that would be a big step forward. So I wanted to come here and observe it uh, firsthand. And uh, so a 12-year-old uh, granddaughter is uh, schooling me in uh, the importance of Taylor Swift and the lyrics of those words. And I am now, uh, you know, being, I'm changing my wardrobe. I've got a I've got bracelets. It's a whole new world here for me. So I'm going to get the hell back to Ontario uh, just to just to keep hang on to my culture. But at the moment, Taylor Swift is top of mind for all of us in this family. Hey, so, hey, Darcy, can you hear me? This is Teddy. Yeah. Um, another thing on deflect is uh, an example of that. Not necessarily with pensions, but uh, we noticed this at the University of Manitoba which is where my union ACs is uh, located along with the University of Winnipeg, where the uh, employer, the University of Manitoba, uh, in the last round of negotiations, uh, both with our uh, bargaining team and also with other unions, uh, kept deferring and deflecting to uh, the regulation from the province and saying, oh, we can't do anything more because the province is constraining uh, what we're able to uh, negotiate in terms of pay. And so uh, even though there's like a surplus and even though there's a lot of money available, uh, they kept pointing uh, in the direction of uh, another power as the explanation for why they couldn't negotiate fairly. Uh, and and it's, I might be simplifying a little bit, but that was for sure. Uh, a deflection was part of their tactic. For sure. Yeah. Deflection or just plain dodge. Uh, so, yeah, that the, the deflecting is very common. Uh, technique and uh, passing the buck so that uh, management can avoid its own responsibilities and minimize its own apparent power. Uh, thanks for that, Teddy. Anyone else want to pick up one of those Ds to illustrate? Like, who, who are we talking about discrediting? Who does management put energy into discrediting? Well, it depends on the situation. Greg Ball, PPWC, Local 15. It depends on the situation. If you're in negotiations, they try to discredit the negotiating committee. If you're uh, in a meeting, the uh, outstanding committee, then they try to discredit the standing committee members. Or if you're having a meeting with them at a liaison meeting as I do as the president, then they turn around and try to discredit me. So, Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do they suggest? might be your motives in doing this work when they're trying to discredit you? What do they uh, suggest 
might be going on for you. Uh, well, they try to discredit just so that they can get membership against me. So maybe they can get a, a, a weaker member um, into negotiating or to agree to a softer deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a direct payoff. If they can uh, discredit a key person in the bargaining committee, or even I'm thinking an early stage I've done a lot of sessions with uh, starting, you know, uh, new stewards. <laughs> Sometimes stewards step forward, not really expecting much trouble. And suddenly they find that bad things are being said about them. And uh, they get really personally hurt. So I think that's what we're, we're trying to make sure people say, okay, Actually, that's a strategy. It's not a. Uh, it's not just a a personal vendetta. It's a strategy. So if if people are going to be uh, discrediting and deflecting, what is uh, the deceive? What specifically did a, a person have in mind when you said deceive is one of the things that uh, the management might try? Any memory on that one? They like to lie when they say they can't afford to do to pay wages or right. Can't make record profits and say you can't pay wages. Right. Uh, so economic lying is a particular uh, resource for them, uh, and you know it, it's dramatic. You've got, you've got it going on right now where. Uh, top executives are getting uh, more and more uh, distant from the rest of the society uh, in terms of their income levels. And at the same time, uh, income levels of regular people are either stagnating or uh, losing ground with, with inflation. So, uh, to deceive people on the economics is an important tool for management. Um, deceiving in, in their ability to accommodate. COVID showed us just how accommodating the employer can become in regards to different um, work options, right? And previous to COVID, at any point when unions tried to negotiate different accommodations for working options, it was always, no, we can't. But then something like COVID showed us, yes, they can, and at little cost. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, and uh, in, the same, in the same strain, I would say, sometimes with accommodation, uh, management will start saying, oh, that's too much uh, inconvenience for other people and blah, blah. In other words, they start taking up uh, the the cause of people who might be opposing a particular accommodation. So for sure, deceiving. Yeah, I see another hand going up. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know your name in the front row. Oh, I see. I thought you were holding the, the paper. Okay. Uh, all right, let's hold it with a few of the Ds that we have identified. Uh, here is another uh, example of some of a way, a different way of dealing with these things. If I ask you to uh, consider words that start with uh, uh, R, that could uh, be the union's response uh, or way of coming back at the dead, what we call the deadly deeds. You've identified several of the deadly deeds divide, deceive, deflect, discredit, etc. 
Can you think of anything the union can be doing that is stepping up and addressing this so that we have a, a handy um, kit of responses that we can turn to at the point that the uh, employer is starting to screw around with our heads. Because what we're talking about here is a psychological game. Anybody think of an R? Uh, reconnect um, with our members and our membership. Very nice. Yeah. So reconnect with the members. Uh, that may mean uh, dealing with rumors. Or am I wrong? Are, are there none of your workplaces where rumors are important? Hello? Like, I can tell you that... Uh, well, when I worked with the communication workers, what's now part of Unifor, uh, the uh, the word in the uh, in the workshops was, if you haven't heard a rumor by eleven in the morning, it's time to start one. <laughs> so, uh, but usually the union is uh, reacting to rumors rather than initiating them. So. I think it's really worth thinking about how to reconnect with the members. Uh, and engaging with rumors is a powerful way of doing it. Because that reconnection, knowing that, uh, that uh, a rumor is on the run through the workplace and addressing it up front puts you in a completely different position than if you are uh, coming in late in the game and uh, uh, unaware of what's on members' minds. So reconnecting, thank you. Anybody else got an R you'd like to throw into the mix? Rebuttal? Mm. Sure. So rebuttal, like just bringing evidence forward. Is that what you mean? Or another counter to the argument? Let's say if the uh, em employer starts uh, to deceive around an accommodation, what would rebuttal look like? Yeah. Rebuttal, like you would have to do um, some research around like uh, like sized companies who have made this accommodation and how it might have worked out. If there's that evidence that you could present to show that it has been done and it can be done. Right. 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 So research becomes important here because to get there's another R. So we've got reconnect, rebuttal. Uh, and uh, uh, research that if we if we have original information and we've done our homework and reached out to our allies, maybe in other locals or uh, through the CCU itself, <laughs> that's one way to be able to build some momentum against the deadly Ds. So thank you, research, as a part of building the rebuttal. Other thoughts that start with an R. How about reevaluate? Mm -hmm. Sure. What do you have in mind? I uh, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of, sort of reevaluate your position with regard to what the employer is doing, and try to reevaluate where your strengths lie, um, and how best to leverage those strengths. Uh, going forward, because uh, um, quite often management will try to change the landscape, and uh, if you uh, if you're in a position where you can reevaluate how that landscape can play into your favor, you're at a better advantage. For sure. I mean, we're going to come to uh, the art of war shortly, but just to say, uh, 
one of the things that uh, Sun Tzu says is uh, if you are uh, uh, fully aware of yourself, uh, but not aware of what's going on with your adversary, you only have half the story. If you only understand the adversary and not your own membership, then you only have half the story. That you need to have both sides knowledgeable uh, so that you are reevaluating, reflecting on what's going on rather than just reacting. So thank you. I think that's an important uh, addition to our toolkit. Could we get one more R uh, out of this? Sorry, did I interrupt someone? Uh, no. Uh, how about respect? If you don't have respect at the on any level with your and your relationship with who you're doing battle with per se, or doing the dance with. Yeah. Great. So respect, and it would be, it'd be so great if we had more respect amongst ourselves in the union movement. You know, the amount of energy that goes into uh, dealing with internal divisions and internal uh, personality co uh, conflicts that uh, emerge, uh, having a, a code of respect operating within the union would be a powerful tool here. So I, I want to thank you. I see uh, five uh, or more um, uh, of the deadly Ds coming out and uh, a number of union R's that uh, reconnect, rebuttal, research, reevaluate. These are uh, powerful tools that we can use. Darcy, so, if I, sorry, if I may, uh, well, the management evaluation form would probably also fall under an R uh, redirect. Nice. Yeah. Uh, which is, as another person said, uh, at the beginning, it's uh, what you're doing is trying to take over the narrative, right? Change the narrative so that you are not uh, reacting only to what the uh, management brings forward. Okay, if we take that, there's a series of deadly Ds coming from the management side, a series of restorative Rs coming from the union side, uh, and uh, thinking, okay, that's a different way psychologically of looking at the dynamic of union and management. That's where I'd like to bring in the... Uh, a uh, piece of uh, Union Judo and the Art of War. Uh, can I first check? I, I know that you've had access to some uh, uh, text of the Art of War. Before this session came up, had anybody, uh, what which people had heard of or looked at the Art of War? Can you put your hands up? Had a lot of people heard of it? Whoa. A good number add. Thank you. Okay, so that means we can build on it to some degree. And here's how I suggest we do that. Uh, you'll see there's another page called Principles of Union Judo. It's, it's a two-page little document. Thank you, Brianne. You can relax for a moment. you will be put back to work. Okay, it's difficult in this layout, but I guess the best thing we can do 
is ask people who are in the front row of uh, different areas to uh, move uh, out. That is to say, uh, let's say, Brienne, where you just sat down, if uh, your row were to stand up and come around on the other side of the uh, uh, desk, facing back across the table. Is that clear? Everybody else see what's being done? Can the rest of you do the same? What I'm looking for is to get four groups. I need to have four groups. And could somebody move the uh, uh, flip chart away now so that I can see more clearly? Thank you. Okay, so uh, however you do it. So in the other tables, can you please, people in the front row, stand up, come on around and take it, take your chairs around so that you're facing the people the other way. And you tell me when you think you've got four groups set up. So maybe these guys face here. And then you guys take that. Darce, can we build in a quick break before we go into the next segment? Of course. Okay. So quick break. I'll just people add need each other. It doesn't matter whether you're in your seat or not. You just want to groups. Any anybody needs a break, please take it. Refresh your coffee, get to the washroom, whatever it takes, and come on back. But uh keep let's keep it short. We only have two hours here. And this is a program that could be taking four or five days. You guys, okay. Okay. Darcy, is is four groups critical, or would five be okay? Five will be fine. Okay.
You just tell us when you're ready to go, Darcy. I'll drag everybody back in here. Thank you so much. Okay, I suggest we we go ahead with that now. I'll be back in one minute. Thanks. Okay, everybody take your seats for Darcy here, please. I think that's as good as yeah, it's Darcy. Okay. All right. So uh uh we've got five groups, no problem. <laughs> So let's start on the far, from me, the far left. There's a, a person with a red shirt and a blue jacket there. Can you stand up? Yeah. The whole yeah. group or just? No, just, just that person. The person. Just so, okay. Just so I know. I've got There we go. All right. So we're in the right place. Uh, so that is group one. Uh, and we'll come to, if you stay standing, uh, who, what is your name, please? That's Greg. Okay. 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 In the next table, who's it? who could stand up there? And stay standing for a bit. Hello. Do you mean the folks they're opposing, or do you mean the next group altogether? The next group altogether. Okay, so that'd be you guys. Somebody from you guys got to stand up. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. And who is this? Uh, Jeff Dent. Jeff, Jeff Denstead from the Canadian Union of Skilled Workers. Thank you, Justin, for standing up. <laughs> Jeff. Okay, who's number three? Cody. The name of the person? Cody. C O D Y Cody. Cody. Okay, we need we need a couple of women in the next couple. Okay. <laughs> Lorraine Darcy, L O R R A I N E. Thanks, Lorraine. Okay, and for the fifth group, who's going to stand? Robert. Robert. Okay, so, uh, it's a very democratic process of uh, uh, selecting the reporter uh, from 
uh, from each of these five groups. And here's what I'm asking you to do. If you take the principles of union judo, that document, and Greg, your group uh, has principle number one. Okay? Uh, Justin, your group has number uh, number two. Yes. Cody, your group has number three. Lorraine, yours has number four. And Robert, yours has a new one, which I'm just about to introduce. Okay, that makes the fit. Okay, what I'm asking you to imagine, a new manager has been appointed uh, to an area with 100 employees. Right. In other words, it's not it's not a teeny little unit, um, but it's not like the whole of a a paper plant or something like that. A hundred workers, and this person is an asshole, and they have been assigned by senior management. They've been placed uh, to be an aggressive management presence for those one hundred people. Am I clear on this scenario? So here's what I'm going to ask you to do, and I am very open to questions. This is work. Let's take uh, Greg, your group, principle one. Can you just give me a few words? Like, what does principle one say? Win the battle without fighting. Okay. Win the battle without fighting. So now there are members of ours that love fighting. Some of them become union leaders. But not all members really love fighting and want to be in constant battles with their union. So my question is, how can, I'm going to ask group one to think about, how can you deal with this asshole manager with few battles? Minimize battles. How can you do that? Education for the members. Okay, so... You guys will be talking amongst yourselves, okay? Uh, well, I mean, I didn't say anything, so uh didn't give you any clue. Can we try number two? Uh, number two, that's Justin, your, your group. What basically does that principle number two say? Can't hear you. Hey, Darcy, this is Teddy. Just letting you, letting you know, our reporter's name is Jeff. Jeff. And Thank that's you. okay to call me Justin. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but thank okay. you. Okay, Jeff, Justin. Thank you. Okay, Jeff, Justin. Uh, give me Give me an idea of what is principle number two. Well, if you look at the uh, second sentence in that paragraph, uh, we should divide um, them from other employers. So I guess we should be uh, taking a look at the asshole and, and what um, he's bringing there from the employer and, I don't know, trying to separate him from the um, the employer, I guess. Perfect. Maybe win him over. Yeah, okay. So, so you guys talk about the how. How are we going to do that? Number three, there are different traits that are dangerous in general. Uh, if, if they're not balanced, they can do all kinds of weird shit. So uh, in number three, Cody, any thought uh, on what that means for uh, 
your group, which is trying to protect a hundred workers against an uh, an aggressive new manager? Uh, if not careful, there are five things that'll take you down. Okay, so I want you guys to explore those five things. See whether any one of those is a, a problem you've noticed uh, coming up in your union. I'm not talking about identifying individuals here. I'm talking about a pattern. And number four, which would be Lorraine's, uh, when... Uh, what what does uh, principle four say? To build union strength, you need to avoid overloading yourself with too many battles. So it's telling you to rest and perhaps reevaluate the situation before moving ahead to Great. conserve really to conserve your resources and your energy. Right. Yeah, one of the things Sun Tzu talks about a lot mm -hmm. is uh, the importance of conserving resources. Uh, that you don't uh, exhaust your, get excited, throw everything you've got into a battle, and then how do you follow up after it? Because mm -hmm. all your resources are gone. Uh, okay, and Robert, we're over in number five. Uh, number five, here is the quote from Sun Tzu that I'm proposing you deal with. In my book, it's on page 43, but... Uh, there are so many different prints of uh, books. Uh, it's in the fray or the battle. So let me just, I'll read it to you twice. When ears do not hear, use gongs and drums. When eyes do not see, use banners and flags. Gongs and drums, banners and flags, are the ears and eyes of the army. I'll read it a second time. When ears do not hear, use gongs and drums. When ears do not see, use banners and flags. Gongs and drums, banners and flags are the ears and eyes of the army. So the reason I picked this one is it's saying uh, we need to not just have good speeches. We need to have some symbols for people to identify with. And it leads to questions like how many of how many members of these hundred members are wearing union jackets or using union swag of any kind? Are people afraid to identify as unionists and so on? Is it clear, Robert, what I'm asking you to do? Yes. Okay. So these are all questions for practical people. Uh, this is ancient wisdom that has been passed on for 2,500 years now uh, and which has uh, come from a very different uh, cultural environment than ours, but uh, has a depth that we could learn from. So that's what I'm inviting you to do. So I'd like you to take about 15 minutes and you're going to come back with a report and the report is how are you going to do this? Okay. Okay. So uh, it doesn't have to be Greg yourself, but uh, somebody from your group uh, willing to suggest how you want to implement principle number one in this very unpleasant situation. Don't look so impressed. Uh, Greg Ball, PPWC Local 15. First off, maintain professionalism. Uh, document everything. Don't give in to intimidation. Have a plan. Act, not react. Don't engage, which is maintain professionalism. Work to the company policy, so follow your own job descriptions, nothing more, nothing less. And above all, educate our, our members so they know the Constitution, know the bylaws, know the JLA, 
And then at the end, we can always work to rule. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, since we're recording this, that it'll be possible. Is it is Sean Kane in the hall at the moment? Yeah. Uh, so maybe you'll be able, Sean, to uh, pull together some summary of all of this at a later point. Yes. Actually, this whole video will be going up on our website and YouTube channel, if that's okay with you, of course. Of, of course. Okay. I only have, uh, <laughs> okay. Sean, yeah. I, only, I only have one story to tell. It's okay. the, story, the story I believe in. So uh, I don't have to worry about uh, oh, great. Uh, copyright on my what I say. Okay, cool. Sounds great. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you. Great. Okay, so that takes some pressure off uh, of you, Brianne. Uh, but what I did get is uh, we need to be professional, we need to educate, and we may go to our work to rule. I want to pause here for a moment and just say, <clears throat> in the labor movement, which is where I've spent my whole adult life, uh, I think that we uh, take uh, initial germ of an idea and before it's even fully spelled out into sentences, we shoot it down. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here? Like when, when new ideas come forward or specific suggestions like these ones are coming forward, then uh, our tendency is not to think of, oh, that's interesting. What could we do with it? Uh, our tendency is to say, oh, yeah, we tried that. It didn't work. So I just want to encourage you for this next few minutes to hold back on your criticisms of whatever is being put forward by any of the five groups. And let's just see what we got. If we have a whole bunch of possible proposals, then we got something to work with. Then we can start filtering. But let's not uh, start off by shooting down uh, the first ones that have come out of uh greg's group you follow me just let's let's hold back and listen to each other so let's hear from uh uh somebody who is cunningly disguised as jeff but is actually justin yeah in room to, in group two What did you guys come up with about how you're going to deal with this situation? So the, the purpose, what we were trying to accomplish was to separate the supervisor from the employer and public. Um, the first step was to establish a stronger relationship with the next level of management. Cause sometimes you have that clay layer of management that uh, likes to separate the, the floor from the ceiling. So going past that clay layer, getting to that upper level of management and, and trying to strengthen that relationship. Um, and if the employer was not smart enough to let us know that, um, and uh, we did know that that individual was coming, talk to the membership, whether it's, you know, on the floor or uh, a union meeting with the, with the workplace representatives and, and discuss about what we may know about that individual prior to them coming to the um, workplace. So we can do that by researching them uh, through other employees. Maybe the employers even, you know, not smart enough to uh, let us know more details about that individual. So maybe he's coming or she's coming from a different employer and, and finding out where they came from. So again, having those workplace representatives discuss that with, with the uh, em employees and members and, and also talking to those members, that's a good way to get to the public because those hundred individuals have hundred, like have a hundred partners and the, and the word can spread quite well that way. And then um, if we have the ability to talk to potential customers, 
maybe getting an understanding of where that individual came from and what effect they may have without compromising their relationship with management. So mm. that's, I don't, does anybody else want to add to that from the group? Thank you. That's great. So we're going to get past the clay layer. Thank you. A new phrase for me. I understand, I think, what you mean. Can you spell out a little more what you mean by the clay layer? So sometimes you're going to have like a higher mm -hmm. level of management and then you have mid-management. And we kind of equated the supervisor as a mid-management. So, uh, you know, in our union, COSW, you tend to have supervisors already in the collective agreement, but you may have in other industries a clear layer of management that's the buffer between upper management. So having those executive type committees where you can engage the upper management, the executives, is always an advantage to shield yourself from that clay layer. The middle managers. Right, right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Cody, how about your group? Uh, you don't have to answer yourself. You may uh, skillfully deflect, as somebody said earlier. Uh, so for somebody else to carry that ball, but uh, let us hear from your group. Yeah, they're not going to let me pass this mic off. So, uh, so first we had to really look at this based off the information. We're not looking at one one item here. Uh, so based off the information. We had to realize that this person's not likely to to want to be fired, so they're not likely ready to die. Um, based off what we know, th mm -hmm. they're not puritanical, and uh, because of their behavior, they're not likely loved. So he's likely intent on living, wanting to remain in his position, and can be captured, and likely quick to anger and can be shamed. So understanding this type of person and their experience. We need to exercise self-reflection on ourselves and how we see ourselves in our organization interacting with them and then do research to understand the facts to be prepared. Uh, we can't allow them to bait us. We need to stay focused on the objective while maintaining effective communication with members to remain united. And if they're quick to anger, we can uh, bait them by getting them excited and remaining calm and then utilizing these findings of this individual to capture them and then have them removed through shame. Wow. Okay, so you have a, a specific sequence planned for how you're going to deal with this. That's correct. Yeah. And then... Your hope is that that person will be replaced by somebody else who's more amenable to the kind of relation that we're talking about here. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Very interesting. All right. Lorraine, how about your crew? Hi, this is Rosa. I'm going to read the uh, the notes for the group on Lorraine's behalf. Thank you. Okay, so we took principle number four and we broke it down into a couple of sections. So what we decided is um, as a union, uh, we would review existing policies, example, collective agreement and or anti-bullying policies so that we could start from the top, reaching to the top to directly address the issues. We, would, um, we were thinking that in order to engage the group and determine who the leaders are or the organizers are among the 100 employees so that they don't feel overwhelmed that the union is taking up their battle, um, engage in a social situation so that we can create a safe space where conversations could be had and address um, consistent job action on how to combat the, the treatment. Um, 
and also the rest piece to create a safe space to pause and replenish energy for the next battle. Um, tying in arguments and benefits from both uh, management and workers, where there has to be flexibility on both sides and a willingness to accommodate. Knowing when to use judo boxing techniques when communicating with management, when your battles are times where uh, we can use a softer approach to conserve energy and then when we have to really pack that punch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that idea of conserving energy is uh, coming up repeatedly here. And it is an emphasis in Sun Tzu as well. So thank you. That's great. And uh, our last one with the gongs and drums is Robert and Robert's group. I, uh, I'll just be honest. We opened up with burning the guy's car, sending packages to his house. And then Lidl came to our mindset. So... Okay. some of us all right no um you know we talked about coordinating a day of union wear if there was no union wear we talked about like wearing pink you know no harassment in the workplace we talked a lot about you know understanding what the employer had in respect to harassment policies and for example arranging brown bag lunch sessions with everybody on that we talked about collecting that type of information, you know, what was happening and making an awareness campaign, whether it's above the individual's head, you know, to executive or to a board. We talked about creating group of meetings, you know, getting everybody to there, bringing that manager in either to talk about it, or maybe we even talked about an open hat. I believe that's the right term. What was the term? A hat off, take your hat off, like remove your title and just get to know each other. Maybe that would improve the situation. Mm -hmm. we and we also really like this idea getting everyone a button i deserve respect and having everyone wear it. a silent but powerful statement workplace signage of course so having signs if we're allowed signs and they have an anti-harassment or you know respectful workplace policy making sure it's everywhere giving them to people as they drive in handing them out so definitely on the signage thank you great well you certainly picked up the theme from sun tzu so we got a lot to work from here okay uh, okay. One of the things I've noticed at union meetings is we have a tendency to uh, uh, open up for suggestions and then say, thank you very much, we'll think about it. Uh, meaning that you we take away from people their capacity of generating these ideas and selecting among them. So I'd like to try and avoid doing that by uh, asking you to uh, do a, a, a little filter of the ideas that have been brought up. And the filter is, I think some of you will be familiar with it. So, um, Brianne, I'll just mention to you then, if you can uh, note uh, the uh, uh, the five uh, the five pieces. So it's S M A R T. This is the filter. This is what we use to figure how wh which of the many ideas that have come up, because I can count. Yeah, I've got at least 15 suggestions here. So there's a lot to work from. Here are the, 
the filters we would use. Okay, Brianne? Number one, specific. That's the S. Number two, measurable. Number three, achievable. Number four, respects resources. And number five is time bound. Okay, as Uh, as uh, was ob observed already, uh, we're trying to do a uh, very short uh, version of what could be a much longer process. But if you were to say, what the hell? Uh, the, this group of union leaders has come together and generated Maybe it's 15, maybe it's 20, depends how you group them. But uh, we have a whole series of them. Uh, so uh, we, want, we would want to apply the uh, five filters in order to see which two or three as a union we might talk about more with other people. Uh, that is back back home when we take the results of this uh, conference back to the the members that have paid for uh, the passage to Halifax. So here we go. Uh, group one talking about professional uh, approach. Uh, educating members and the work to rule. The idea of work, uh, sorry, of uh, educating members comes up again uh, in the idea of safe space for members in Lorraine's group uh, and uh, also in the signage and other uh, activities that were in Robert's group. So I think that that theme of member education is one strong outcome from this. Secondly, I would say to uh, uh, Brienne, uh, out of this, if we were to do a proper full filter, we probably would uh, do something about engaging top management and isolating the uh, uh, over aggressive manager. And to do that, uh, seeing what their weaknesses are, and for example, being able to bait them to anger and then drive them out through shame. So this is direct use of uh, Sun Tzu in a, a current context. So the street, uh, the conserving of energy and how that gets done is an interesting aspect of this too. We have a variety of ideas, for example, from group five, uh, signage, wearing pink, uh, uh, brown bag lunches and so on. To conserve energy, presumably you would uh, fix on one and it sounds as though their top priority one would be, I deserve respect buttons. Uh, so just, uh, thinking about, okay, is that doable? Uh, it's specific, a button. It's measurable. 
you can think of, okay, you need a hundred buttons. Uh, is that achievable? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't take long. Does it respect resources? Yeah, because it's not too expensive and it can be done quickly. One of the emphases that comes out of Sun Tzu is swift victory. What you don't want is something that drags on and on and on and exhausts your resources. So the push here is for something that is more uh, efficient, faster, uh, that is softer, and that is more strategic rather than uh, losing our energy in reacting and scattering our energy over too many initiatives at the same time. End of speech. So I'm just pulling together quickly in my mind, and I leave it to uh, Sean to do something longer with it. Uh, but I think it's important that what has been said here gets recorded and uh, then is workable as a resource you can draw on to develop further as a strategic judo initiative of the CCU. So uh, I'd like to just ask to take a moment and think, uh, based on what you expected this session to do, uh, uh, a couple of words of something that you thought worked and a couple of words of something that you wished we'd done more of or done differently. Starting with uh, table three. just to keep people a little uncertain. So Cody, how about it? What did you like this morning? What did you guys not like so much? Uh, I like that it gave us a very direct focused approach with clear principles to work off of. Um, it, it really engaged some discussion with our group. And, and I think discussion is the vessel for approaching most of these issues in our workplaces. Thank you. Uh, how about group four? That would be uh, the group of Lorraine, who is now current, uh, currently disguised as Rosa. What was great to see is that um, when we all shared the different actions that we would take, that there was a lot of similarity. So the principles yes. are tied in from principles one to four to five. They all they all tie in. There's there's some commonalities in regards to action items that work in every principle. And the other what 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 could we have? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I I think maybe if we had focused on. Um, some of the job action items that we would have liked to, to use from our principles, I guess that that would be. Good, good. I, I certainly hope, as I say, we could talk about this stuff for a much longer time. And I think it's also much easier to talk about it when we're dealing, dealing with a real workplace of a hundred members. And uh, uh, so we have, some very practical uses uh, to put it to. So thank you for that. Okay, how about group five? Uh, that would be uh, the uh, gangs, the gongs and drums uh, bunch uh, built around Robert. I really liked that even in our group with a wide variety of workplaces, we were able to come up with things that could apply in every workplace, like the color shirt or a button or signage. So even though we all are in different industries and different you know workplaces, we did find common things that would work. Thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. Uh, 
and a, a cross end to group two. Any thoughts you have? Things that worked, things that didn't work so much? Stuff you'd like more discussion of another time? This is my opinion, and I, I'm sure most of the group might share it. I, what I saw with the yeah. five groups is um, a more peaceful approach to conflict resolution. Uh, the union environment that I kind of grew up was a little more militant. I had to deal with the steel workers. I had to deal with um, the auto workers, and they were very militant. And I, I don't want to use this term union thugism, but um, those traditional top-down organizations, I, I, I don't know, and I can't comment on this, but I would like to think that they don't have that same resolve as this group here. Um, definitely a conflict resolution-oriented group here with a more passive attitude. That's kind of what I saw. I don't know if anybody else wants to add to that. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I want to just add from the same group, um, this is Teddy here. Um, I uh i know that this was a shortened workshop so i think that the beginning part when uh we were just when you were discussing the ability to take multiple approaches the time for boxing the time for judo and not counterposing uh not necessarily saying that one strategy is is worth discarding entirely but just time and place and being strategic about what method I think is good. And, uh, and just on uh, Jeff slash Justin's uh, last point, I, I feel like uh, I, I just, I think maybe sometimes the, um, I guess just not like, I think it would be good to um not that it was lacking in this workshop, but I, I just sort of want to make the point that I think that um, um, sometimes it's it's not necessarily possible to avoid. Um, we're looking at the art of war. We're using metaphors of a battle. It's not necessarily possible to avoid some kind of confrontation or some kind of... It's not like we can necessarily use like judo to avoid having to um take a position where for our own self-respect or for trying to achieve a goal we have to be in some kind of clash even if it's not a boxing match um so i think like um just remembering the the piece about choosing a strategy to match like the outcome you want um and not necessarily interpreting that as as negating the the conflict of interest sometimes between us as workers and and the and and the employer um so that that's just sort of a point i i'm not saying it wasn't here but i just i think it's part of this too i would fully agree with that i mean i made my life choice around uh okay am i going towards management or am i going towards the union and uh uh it is uh, something that uh, carries you on uh, potentially for decades uh, with luck. Uh, the last group would be Greg's, uh, group one, and then we can wrap up very shortly. Um, kind of what we heard and I heard from almost every group was education. Educating everyone on your shop floor, educating everyone in the room, and even educating the supervisor on what is and is not appropriate behavior. Yeah, great. Uh, as one who's uh, worked in education primarily, I certainly agree with that. Uh, mm -hmm. And But I know also that there's limits to where uh, education can carry you because there is that basic clash of interest between labor and management, uh, which is why I was first attracted. I'll just say, uh, uh, I didn't uh, pick um, The Art of War off a bookshelf. There was a friend of mine who was a union organizer in Hong Kong who gave me a copy of the book. And she said, this is what you need to know if you're going to be engaging because sometimes there are big battles 
and sometimes you can minimize the harm that is done. So it's uh, in both of those to be a warrior, but to be a healer as well, that I hope we can uh, uh, commit to uh, making a healthier union culture. Mm -hmm. So with that, we are uh, at uh, just a couple of minutes past noon. I was sworn to wrapping on time. And so I'd like to wrap on time. And thank you for all your cooperation and participation. And we're done. Uh, Darcy, it's Kelly Johnson here, uh, president of the CCU. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to do this. This was great. Uh, I believe everyone learned a lot and was engaged. Uh, and I know in Seattle, it's you got up a little early for us because I'm from <laughs> Vancouver as well. So thank right. you very much for doing this uh, for us and uh, hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to do do more work with you. So keep me in mind if there are specific locations where you think it might be uh, interesting and useful to uh, uh, draw on some of this creative strategy material and uh, use it in order to make a uh, more effective representation for our members. So thanks and have a nice lunch. Thanks, Darcy. Goodbye. Bye for now.